definitions here. You have seen these functions before, back in Algebra 1. And in Algebra 1, you had a very basic definition of an exponential that said it can be written as y equals b to the x. We are going to expand upon that definition tomorrow, but not today. Today we're just doing b to the x. b is what we call the growth rate. Okay, so b is the growth rate. It tells us how fast my exponential function is growing or changing. And b must be greater than 0. Okay, your growth rate cannot be negative. So when we have functions, we have inputs, we have outputs. The input is the exponent. And the exponent is always x for exponential function. And the output is the value y. Okay, very basic thing. Now, I have a definition that is going to come up a couple times on our lesson today. And I think we've done this word before, but I'm teaching it to you again because it's the best math word ever. It's an asymptote. I think we've done that word, right? Yes. So A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. Asymptote. That is a line that you approach and you get really, 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 really close to, but you never actually touch. Yes, there's a silent P. Asymptote. Why? I don't know the etymology of asymptote, so if someone wants to figure out, we can look it up in my dictionary, what the etymology of it is, and we'll figure out why there's a sound. But we have an asymptote. We're going to talk about asymptotes for a little bit today. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of graphs. Again, we are going to make these graphs today without our calculator, because your quiz tomorrow is going to be graphing an exponential without a calculator. So it'll be very similar to what we're doing on our notes today. So we're going to start with the function y equals 2 to the x. Okay. So it is right here. We're going to fill in some input values, and then we're going to plot the graph. So I'll give you a strategy for attacking these, and then we'll try a couple on our own. So my strategy here would be to start with x equals 0. Okay. Because if I put 0 in for x, I'm going to start it up here, 2 to the 0 power is... One. Well, you know that all you have to be one then. And then I will go up to x is x is one. Sorry, I can't talk for some reason today. So if I put one in for x, that'd be two to the first power, which is two. Then I'm going to put two in for x. Two to the second power is four. Two to the third power. Two to the fourth power. All right, you got most of your table filled in. Now we got the negatives. Yeah, not 32. That'd be 2 to the 6. All right, now if I have negative 1 as my input. So if I put negative 1 in for x, that's 2 to the negative first power. But what did we learn about negative exponents the other day? They go to the denominator. So that's 1 over 2 to the first, which is just 1 half. If I have 2 to the negative second power, that's 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 to the 4th. Four. All right. So you don't need your calculator for that. No, not at all. So let's plot the point. Now, the fractions you just have to estimate. So if I'm at negative 2 1 fourth, that's just somewhere real close to the line, not quite there. Estimate 1 fourth. Negative 1 1 half and 0 1. We plotted exponential functions the other day. So this shape should look pretty familiar once you make the graph. Now, unlike Friday with the activity we did, we are going to connect the dots. So that activity on Friday was a very particular case. This time we are going to connect the dots. So you should have a graph that looks like what's on my board here. And First of all, would you call that exponential growth or exponential decay? Growth. growth. Why would you say growth? Because it's increasing from left to right. And this graph, we're going to talk more about these graphs in a couple minutes, but this graph, it says, appears to have an asymptote somewhere. Do you see a spot on this graph where it seems to approach a certain line but never actually gets to? Where? Y equals zero, yeah. So Y equals zero is this x-axis right here. So your graph gets really close to the x-axis, but as my x's will get smaller, like negative 3, negative 4, you get really, really small fractions, 
like 1 over 16, or 1 over 8, 1 over 16, 1 over 32, but you never actually get to zero. Right? All right, so I'm going to pause myself up here. You are going to do the next two graphs on your own. You can use your neighbors, or use your brain power. Try no calculator to make those graphs. See what you get, and then we will check. Yes. So this is the next graph you should have. Does anyone have any oh, questions? That's okay. Keep going and then. So y equals 3 to the x. Similar shape, right? Except the numbers are a little bit different. And this graph is a little bit steeper than y equals 2 to the x. Same asymptote. And then y equals 4 to the x. Again, same shape. Graph's a little different. Make sure you have the right numbers in your table. And we also have an asymptote at y equals 0. It gets really close to the x axis or doesn't get there. So let's talk about some characteristics of this graph. Where was every graph's y intercept? One. One. I'm going to write it as an ordered pair, but it had a y intercept at zero, one. Every single graph did. What about x intercept? None of them. Because we said there was an asymptote at the x axis, none of them actually crossed the x axis. Okay? What about the general trend of every graph? Positive. Positive. They're always increasing. You could say it's increasing trend. You could say it has a positive trend. But every graph is going up. What would you say is the domain of all of those graphs? Yeah, negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. Right? Every graph here, there's an arrow to the left going to infinity, and an arrow to the right. Now let's talk about the range. Where's the lowest y value of every graph? It gets to zero, but what kind of parenthesis or bracket should I put at zero here? Does it ever get to zero? No. No, so it gets a parenthesis at zero. And then how high up does it go? Infinity. So your range is only from zero to infinity. I don't have negative numbers on these graphs. Now, as B gets larger, so let's go back to the first graph here. This is 2. 2 to the x. My next graph is 3 to the x, so B is getting bigger. And then 4 to the x. What do you notice about those graphs? Yeah, it gets steeper. So as the base gets larger, the graph gets steeper. All right, not too bad. So this is the one place next where you are going to need your graphing calculator, theoretically. So if you want to play a graphing calculator, I'm going to teach you a new number. Is it No. This is one of two numbers you're going to learn this year. I know you've been waiting, like on pins and needles, for me to teach you a new number. Oh, that's perfect. You're going to learn two new numbers this year. This is one of them. This number is called E. I know you're going to say, well, Miss Aldrich, E is not a number. E is a letter. You're correct. But E right here is also a number in math. The other number you're going to learn is I. We'll learn I later this year. And I, interestingly, interestingly, at least to me, enough, how do you say I, the letter I in French? E. So, yeah. You know, we're learning a bunch of E's here. Yeah. Anyway, so the letter E is an irrational number. What does irrational mean? We don't know the end. Yeah, we don't know the end. The number just, it doesn't repeat. The decimal goes on and on and on forever. So E is 2.718. That's as far as I have numbers. 2818288. Now, yeah, and it just keeps going. So E doesn't repeat. It doesn't stop. It's a really important number. It's kind of like pi, where it's used a lot for different things, and we're going to learn more uses of it as we go through this week and next week. Um, but what we call it Y equals E to the X. We're going to graph that in a second. says there is called the natural exponential function. All right, we're going to learn something called a natural logarithm in a couple of days. But e to the x is used with logarithms here. And there will be other places. Um, and there are applications in the real world, but we'll get to at the end of the unit, that use e. Well, let's graph three functions on our graphing calculator. So one in our brief is here. 
We're going to graph y equals 2 to the x. So let's do that first. y equals 2 to the x. So when you go to your graphing calculator, so you go to the y equals, and you're just going to graph y equals 2. And then if you're going to put x to the x on it, you use the caret button to the x. Okay. So this should, when you hit graph, look kind of like the picture that you made on your paper a couple minutes ago. Have that in there. Oh, it, it should, if you get it right. Then it wants us to graph y equals 3 to the x. So on the same grid, I want you to keep y equals 2 to the x. I just want you to go down the line. Go down the line here and graph y equals 3 to the x. Now, if, you did, if we did the right thing before, that's my red graph here, you should notice that 3 to the x, the right graph is deeper than the blue graph, yes. which is what we decided before because 3 is a bigger base than 2. Well, now we're going to graph y equals e to the x. So we're going to put a third graph on here. So let's figure out, first of all, where e is on our calculator. There's actually two spots where e is located. Does anyone see one, Rachel? Um, ln. Yeah, do you see the ln button? Yes. It's right, yeah. I see it right here. This is always on the right in there. But it's right, third button from the bottom, from the left. If you hit, if the E of the X is in blue, you hit the second, the blue key, then E to the X there. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. All right, so E to the X, you hit the second key, then LN, and then it gives you an X point, and you can just type X in right there. Now let's hit graph on that one. Does everyone have e to the x? No. Oh, second. Blue graph, 3 to the x. It's a little hard to see, but I had a black line. Oh, I know. Yeah? Can you help with yours? No, I can't see any. Zoom 6. Zoom 6. Pull up that color. It will show you. Yep, yours is good. It's hard to see. to the blue and the red? By the red. By the red. But is it outside of us, in between them? It's in between. E to the X graph in between 2 to the X and 3 to the X. Why do you think that that makes sense? When did we say E was equal to? E is 2.718. Is that in between 2 and 3? Yeah. So when we graph it, the same properties apply here. So what? how do their graphs compare? Y equals e to the x is in between y equals 2 to the x and y equals 3 to the x. Again, because e is in between 2 and 3. Why is it important? Well, e is in your x. We haven't heard why it's important yet. It's, it's actually used in a lot of applications, so we're going to be doing, um, like, interest rates and um, compound interest and things like application problems with exponential functions in a so couple of weeks. So the e is, sorry. Well, today I'm just showing you that there is this new number that exists. The application of what it is used for and where its importance is, we're going to keep using it. We'll start to learn it as we go. So I'm showing it to you here. We'll keep using it the next couple weeks. Okay? All right. Now, there's your calculator stuff. Let's make a couple more graphs. So we'll do this one together again, and then we'll try a couple on our own. This graph is y equals 2 to the negative x. So again, let's try to do this without our calculator here. 2 to the negative x. So I would start with the same strategy. I would start with 0. Because if I put 0 into my exponent, y equals 2 to the negative 0 power. Well, negative 0 is the same as 0, right? Yeah? So anything to the 0 is 1. Okay, start with 0. Then let's put a 1 in for x. y equals 2 to the negative 1, because I put 1 in. What is 2 to the negative first? We just did this on the other graph on the front. 
1 over 2. So at x equals 1, you have the point 1 half. What about 2 to the negative second power? 1 fourth. All right, so I did my positive x's. Let's do the negative x's. What about 2 to the negative, negative first? That's technically what we're doing. That's just 2, because that's 2 to the first power, which is 2. See the pattern here? 2 to the negative, negative second is 2 to the second, which is 4. What would 2 to the negative 3 be? 8, and 2 to the negative 4? 16, or 2 to the negative, negative 4 is what I just wrote. We're okay there? Yeah. All right, let's plot those points. So if I have negative 4, 16 is up here. Negative 3, 8. Negative 2, 4. Good, and you should get a graph that looks like mine. Now, would you say that that is exponential growth or decay? Why decay? Because this graph is going down. Is there an asymptote on this graph? Yes. Yes, what line is it at? Y equals zero. Good. I want you to try these other ones with the negative exponents, 3B and 3C. The next two graphs here will come back together in a couple of minutes. But I would also make sure that you can graph these times. So let's make sure our graphs pretty similar. So as you're finishing up, here's the next graph on the table. So you can check B, see if you have the same table there. We're almost done today, folks. Almost there. All right, we good with B? Yeah. All right, then C is this graph. They all look, again, very similar. They're related somehow. Let's talk about how they're related really quickly. So you might have answered some of this. Where's the y-intercept for every graph? 1. 0, 1 again. So all the y-intercepts for both of our exponential functions on the first page and the second was 1. Where are the x-intercepts? None. Why are there none? Yes, because there's an asymptote at the x-axis. So you never actually touch the x-axis. What's the trend of this graph? Decreasing. We call that exponential decay. And what about our domain? Negative infinity to? Infinity. So again, all real numbers here. Where's our range? Where's the lowest y value? Zero. With a bracket or a parenthesis? A parenthesis, zero, and it goes up to? Infinity. Good. Now, same question. As the base gets larger. So I started here at 2 to the x, 2 to the negative x, 3 to the negative x, 4 to the negative x. What do you notice about the graph? They also get steeper. So it gets steeper. Okay, so we have seen a lot of graphs today. Six of them. So let's talk a little bit about their equations and then we'll be done for today, okay? Yes. So let's compare the graphs that we made in part 3 and part one. Okay. So that means on the front page of your notes and the back page of that first set of notes. Do you see a connection between y equals 2 to the x and y equals negative 2 to the x? So that means if I look at, sorry I have to flip through a lot here, this graph, so look at the table, look at the graph, and this graph. They're opposite. How are they opposite? One's increasing, one's decreasing. What do you notice about their y values, though? They're kind of the same, right? They're the same numbers, but they're different. So let's see. How can we explain this? We'll say hmm. they're similar. One is increasing. One is decreasing. They have the same x and y values, but kind of in a different order, right? So they're obviously related somehow. 
So let's bring our calculator to it quick. We'll put our graphing calculator here, and it says let's graph y equals 2 to the negative x and 1 half to the x. Oops, that is not what I wanted. I wanted this guy. So if I graph here, let's see. So it says graph 2 to the negative x power, and then parentheses 1 half to the x power. Graph page for me. What, do you, what should you expect to see? Same graph. So 2 to the negative x and 1 half to the x. When you graph those on your calculator, it gives you the same graph. Well, let's talk about exponent rules real quick. Why is 2 to the negative x the same thing as 1 half to the x? What do you know about negative exponents? What happens? It gets, a, it gets moved to the denominator. So this is really 1 over 2 to the x, which is the same, guys. We are almost done. Let's just hang in here. Which is the same as 1 half to the x. So what that means is these last few problems that we graphed y equals 2 to the negative x, 3 to the negative x, 4 to the negative x, we can actually rewrite. So let's go back to our graph. So we're on that last page. So flip back over real quick. Let's go back to number three here. And let's rewrite the equation. So we just figured out that instead of two to the negative x, that's the same thing as y equals one half to the x. What would the equation in B be equal to? One third to the x. You should be writing this down next to each graph instead of playing on your phone, Michael. And in C, what equation should this be equal to? One fourth to the x. Well, what do we know? Let's review what we know about exponential functions now. We talked about this a little bit last week. Let's review what we know about exponential. If the number b, our base, is bigger than 1. So in our examples here, that would be like y equals 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x. We call this exponential growth. Right? The base b is bigger than 1, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is growing. When our base is between 0 and 1, so what we just saw, which would be like 1 half, to the x, one third to the x, and so on, that's exponential decay. So instead of really writing two to the negative x, we typically would write one half to the x. Okay? And where were all the y-intercepts of these functions at? Zero, one. Good. All right. So we graphed exponentials today. Tomorrow we will look a little bit more and more.